Hi, hi, and welcome to Strap a Watch. I'm Michael Knapp with Michael Knapp Leather. Excuse the voice, I've got a little bit of a cold. I hadn't been sick in about 20 years, and we have a two-year-old granddaughter that's in a daycare during the day, weekdays, and we help take care of her quite a bit. And I'll tell you what, in these last two years, I've got all these new kind of germs, so I constantly am getting different types of bugs, you know, so pardon the voice. On today's episode, we're going to be highlighting one of my all-time favorite watches in my personal collection, my Omega Seamaster Professional uh, Diver 300M. It's the older model. Uh, as you can see, mine has the plain uh, dial face to it. And then all of the newer ones have come out with these wave patterns on all the different colors they've come out with. So you can see this more up close right here. But if you notice, I have not made a strap for this watch. I'm not saying that I never will, but I have the bracelet still on here. And the reason is I love the bracelet. Um, out of all of the watches I have ever gotten with bracelets, this is by far the most comfortable one. I've watched some reviews and guys have talked about how it's very 1990s styling. I don't know what that means. All I can tell you to me, it's integrated, the bracelet is integrated very well in the overall design of the watch head. It's just gorgeous. And it's, again, it's just super comfortable. Um, so I did not make a strap this week. What I have made, this is the time of year I start getting slammed with orders. We've got Christmas and, and Hanukkah coming up and a lot of people, this is when I get flooded with orders. Well, a gentleman, ordered two minimalist wallets uh, for his sons for Christmas. And I just got finished with them. I did a, a minimalist wallet on that Gators, Florida Gators watch, but it was a different style of one of these. So today you're gonna be seeing me hand make these and we're gonna go in more in depth on the watch, uh, the Omega Seamaster of mine. And I also have some pretty exciting news. Two subscribers reached out to me this week, I'm gonna talk about that. One had some advice about a particular watch, and one was motivated to actually buy a mechanical watch. So I'm gonna share some information about that. Stick around, after the intro, we're gonna get right into it. So much for joining me today on Strap a Watch. And again, excuse my voice, please, uh, with this cold. So here is my watch um, on the website here. They still sell these worldwide at boutiques, but they no longer are making this particular model. They all have the new wave pattern on the dial. And here you can see I'm just showing with straps how a different strap really makes a watch look different. That's what I always talk about on. You know, strap a watch is uh, by changing out straps, it's like one watch becomes many watches. So I was just checking out the website, but that's it. That's actually my watch. And here I am getting ready to cut out all the leather pieces to the minimalist wallet. And that's where I'm coming to you from. That's my leather studio. And here is the wallet listed on my website. And please know that that price, $40, is always subject to change because you can see this video is going to be out for probably years and years to come and down the road, just supply and demand. That pricing is absolutely subject to change. So in getting to a couple of gentlemen that reached out to me, subscribers of the channel, Strap Watch of this channel, one of which was contemplating on buying a particular cheap, I'll just say, dive watch. And he, he asked me what I, I thought about that. And, you know, I wrote him back and, and then I sent him some examples of watches that were just a little bit more. I mean, maybe $50, $60 more in cost that were just so much better in quality and, and everything, styling even. Um, 
And, you know, I'm glad he, he took my advice because I'll just say it. You know, it was an Invicta watch that he was interested in, a dive watch. And I know how much they cost. And, yeah, they're really cheap. Uh, they've made just literally millions and millions of these watches. And, you know, I've heard nothing but a lot of horror stories on them. And, and some people stand by them. And that's cool if that's your thing. You know, I don't mean to slam anybody. I'm, you know I'm not a watch knob. I own Timexes and, you know, Casios and Seikos and Citizen watches. So, but, you know, would I buy an Invicta watch myself? No, I would not. And pardon the dog. If you hear a dog barking, it's my neighbor's dog. Oh, that dog drives me crazy. There he is again. So he's going to save up some more money, you know, and that's kind of the thing about watches, you know. Um, in a sense, they should kind of hurt a little bit in pulling out the wallet to pay for a watch. And you, you get what you pay for. And one of the differences with buying certain brands of watches is some of them really hold value well and some don't. And, you know, it's like... You know, a Rolex is going to hold its value super well. Um, you know, some watches, you know, Rolex watches, you buy them and you can make money on them, and they become pretty good investment value watches. But um, I don't buy watches for that. I know some guys that do. I don't. I buy them strictly for the pleasure of wearing them, and, and you know, they just uh, – and, and I, I don't sell watches. I mean, once I buy a watch, I don't sell a watch. I just don't. It, it's not to say that I never will. There's my watch in the in the auto winder right there. So, and I usually have a couple of watches going in there. But um, I just thought I'd film that really quick. Here I'm getting ready to airbrush. You know, this guy, the the father of these these guys that uh, he ordered these for his kids, for his two sons for their Christmas. He just said red and blue, didn't say which was going with which. I asked what stitching colors. He never replied back. So I, here I was having to just, you know, go ahead and pull the trigger myself and make a decision on who was getting what. And I thought, okay, well, if I'm going to do one in red and blue, I'll do the blue one in red stitching and the red one in blue stitching. So you'll see that coming up here pretty soon. And here I'm doing edge coat on the tops of each of the pockets, and then I'll have to burnish all that in. You'll see all that being done. So the other gentleman that reached out this week um, emailed me and told me that you know he was an Apple Watch guy. It's all he wore it was a smart watch, Apple Watch, and he bought this week online he bought a zin 104 you know and here last week i had highlighted my zin 556i well he bought it's a pilot's watch it's a really cool watch the zin 104 and he was pretty excited to tell me about it so i was like oh my gosh now i'm having influence enough where people are reaching out for advice and people are pulling the trigger buying watches so I'm, I'm pretty excited for this guy because uh, he is local and he's asked me to make a strap. So uh, pretty soon he's going to be dropping the watch off to me. And what I'd like to do is also uh, measure his, his actual wrist size to really customize this watch for his actual wrist size and go through which uh, leather alligator skin he's looking at, at getting. And I'm going to also see if I can rope him into doing a short little interview about him buying the watch. Uh, I don't know if he's going to be good to do that or not, but I know he watches this channel, so I'm kind of just setting it up here. You can think about it, Jim. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I really appreciate you reaching out to me, both uh, Jim and John, this past week. It's it's pretty neat stuff. So you know about this, uh, this Omega Seamaster of mine now, and I bought it about four years ago. 
And the reason I bought it, if you saw the episode where I made the passport wallets and I talked about also traveling with watches and I shared some of the horror stories that I've had while traveling with watches. And, you know, in there I talked about how I had left a Tudor um, Heritage GMT black face, black bezel, just a gorgeous watch in a hotel room. And I had never gotten the watch back. So this watch that, um, this Omega Seamaster, is the watch I bought to replace that watch. So that's why I, I ended up getting the watch. And, you know, I got a pretty good deal on it. So that's why I ended up pulling the trigger. And I even stated before, would I have, if I had the money, would I have bought a, a Submariner? Yeah, I would have bought a Submariner. But I just, I didn't have that kind of funds at the time. And also, right now, and it's been going on for quite a while, um, you can't even get a lot of Rolex watches through authorized dealers. I'm on a waiting list right now to purchase a particular uh, Rolex GMT uh, Pepsi. And I've been on that waiting list for probably a year. And who knows if I'll ever get the actual call. I do have some clout. I feel with my authorized dealer here in the Northeast Florida, Jacksonville, Florida market. And the other neat thing about uh, this particular authorized dealer is it's Underwood Jewelers. And so just to, you know, get that right out in full disclosure, it's where I bought my Rolex Milgaus um, about four years ago as well is, uh, you know, is I have kind of an in there where my hope is that I'll be able to start highlighting some of their watches. I'd love to do an interview with the owner. He's a really cool guy. He used to uh, ride rodeo um, in, in college days. And uh, from everything I know about the guy, he's just really cool, down-to-earth, good guy. And I'd love to get him to sit down for an interview here in the near future. Um, and if not him, at least maybe one of the managers of one of the uh, locations of Underwood Jewelers here in the Jacksonville, Florida market. Because I'd also really like to, to talk to them about, you know, the waiting list situation. And, you know, just, just get it all out in the open. Um, you know, it's just amazing to me because... You're seeing in the secondary market where a lot of Rolex watches, the costs are sometimes double and triple the retail on the Rolex website price. So, you know, some of these uh, Submariners that maybe start listing around $10,000 or what have you are going for over $20,000 and they're brand new. In secondhand shops, you know, second um, secondary markets, not authorized dealers, but you know, and there's a number of them online, and you know, what have you, in the, kind of the gray market. So, uh, you know, it's 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 been frustrating for a lot of us who are fans of Rolex, um, because you know they're they're still pumping out tons of watches. It's just you know, for people that ordinary people that want to buy them. And I mean, yeah, I mean, we're talking six to say $10,000 and up and I'm saying ordinary people, but there's a lot of people that love the brand and will pull the trigger on, you know, buying a Rolex watch. Uh, this is, you know, in, um, in a machine that's, uh, that shows how many beats per second, how accurate the watch is. And you saw it was about plus, two seconds a day, which is actually pretty good um, on this 2500 caliber Omega in-house movement that is inside my my watch. So, you know, there's so many watches out there. Um, it's just, you can imagine, for me, you know, I have a pretty smaller collection and it's, you know, I got some in money invested in some of these watches, yeah. But, I mean, there's people out there that have, <laughs> like I was talking about with John Mayer and John Mayer's collection. I talked about it on, I think it was the last episode, um, and the Houdinki episode with the interview with John Mayer 2. That, 
I mean, his, his watch collection is millions and millions of dollars. I mean, here's just a real short clip to show you. And, um, you know, he's a really, he's just a down-to-earth, pretty cool dude. He really is. You know, I didn't know who he was until I saw this episode. I had to Google him. But, you know, there's, there's so many manufactured brands of watches. And, you know, that's why with the one gentleman that reached out and asked about getting an Invicta, I mean, there's certain brands, I, I'll just be honest, I, I would not buy. I mean, I just would not buy. Um, you're so much better off, I feel, going with something that's been very well established. The quality is, is well known. You know, yeah, you might not have any good resale value even buying a Seiko watch or what have you, but you buy an Invicta watch, I mean, it's you're going to just end up throwing that watch away someday. I mean, it's worthless. So here I'm breaking it in, putting some cards into the five-pocket minimalist wallet, getting down to the very final product here. So I always do this. I always, you know, have to bust out the glue that's still being held around the edges. And um, I put in some generic cards just to really help break the pockets in. They turned out really sweet. They did. So here they are, the final product. So you can see the blue dye with the red stitching and the red dye with the blue stitching. And they turned out absolutely sweet. I think these, these two guys are going to love their Christmas presents. Well, listen, thank you so much for joining me today on Strap a Watch. You know, please subscribe to the channel. God bless you all. And until next time, keep on ticking.